If you thought Russia was straight up not having a good time in Ukraine, just wait until you hear about its depressing, but kinda hilarious dumpster fire of a war against Japan in 1904. It's surprisingly similar to the conflict we have right now in 2023. Russia was thought to possess the third strongest military in the world. Its opponent was a small, insignificant country that barely anybody could place on a map, let alone stand a chance against Russia. Both Japan and Ukraine got the best Western support and humiliated Russia. Why don't we stroll down memory lane to the good old days when Russia could lose a war without nuking the world? <laughs> Britain and Russia have had a long, unpleasant history that started in the early 19th century, around the time Napoleon went on his world-changing rampage across Europe. The European countries frantically formed an anti-French alliance and managed to stop Napoleon from taking over the world. The MVPs? Britain in the West and Russia in the East. Believe it or not, Britain and Russia actually had a pretty decent relationship up until that point. Now that there was no more common enemy, arms race was on, and yesterday's friend became today's enemy. While the other colonial powers were busy expanding all over the world with boats, Russia marched on towards Siberia and accumulated big territory energy with all the land, population, and resources an empire could possibly dream of. The one thing they didn't have, of course, was a port that wouldn't freeze up on them. Hey, with France dead in a ditch and Germany dissected like a frog, it was the perfect opportunity for Russia to manifest its glorious Slavic destiny. Britain, the king of the seas, went into full panic mode. The Spanish Armada sunk. The Dutch Republic Navy blown up with tulip NFTs. Revolutionary France tear gassed. All this effort to be at the top and stay at the top, but now with the Russians entering the fray, you can probably see where this is going. Yeah, yeah, the British Royal Navy dominated the world or whatever, but we're still talking about Russia here. Nobody wants a slugfest with Russia. If the Russians were able to establish themselves as a naval superpower, well, that's game over right there, isn't it? The British, like America now, chose the method of containment. And so began the Great Game, a century-long battle of deception, diplomacy, and proxy wars. You are now Russia, with millions of bodies to throw at whatever you want. If you can somehow get to the oceans and start exporting colonialism on an unprecedented scale, you will literally rule the world. Question is, how would you get to the seas? I mean, the closest way is west, so maybe you could carnage your way over there. You kneecap Sweden and cripple the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth relatively easily, giving you the Baltic Sea coast. Good! To get to the Atlantic, however, uh, you need to go through Germany, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway, and then you have to deal with Britain? Okay, maybe you want to choose a different meat grinder to throw your men into, and there are plenty to choose from all across Eurasia or your front yard. Britain, those bastards are running around like maniacs trying to stop you, and you say, let them try. The declining Ottoman Empire is looking like a pretty easy target. Round one of the great game, the Crimean War. We'll have to make a whole separate video on the Crimean War sometime in the future, but TLDR, British meddling and the Ottomans willing to go out in a blaze of glory stops you from going this way. Fine, whatever, shit happens. Let's try going past the Caspian Sea and reach the Indian Ocean this way. The Indian Ocean is right in front of Britain's most profitable colony, India, surprise. Big red line here, and Britain is willing to do anything to keep you away. Britain invades Afghanistan, sets up a puppet government, and even has the audacity to flex on you by stationing troops in Persia. But we're talking about Afghanistan here, the graveyard of empires. The very first video on this channel was about Afghanistan, so check it out after this one. Britain got destroyed by Afghanistan's guerrilla warfare. You take one look at Britain's shit show and say, yeah, I'm not doing that. So stalemate here, I guess? The only option you have left for your dreams of being a naval superpower is way on the other side of the world. The plains of Manchuria and the Korean Peninsula in the distant east are pure and uncontaminated from the meddling influence of those damn Brits. Who's in charge there? Some primitive Asian country? You, Russia, already kicked the Qing Dynasty out of Manchuria and the Primorsky Krai regions. Now your sights are set on the Liaodong Peninsula to the south. 
The Primorsky Krai, while technically an access point to the ocean, had the inconvenient habit of freezing up in the winter. No, not good enough. You need a more reliable port. The nation that dared to stand up against the full might of the Russian war machine was none other than this country called Japan. Japan is the third biggest country in the world by GDP now in 2023, but this wasn't always the case. In 1905, Japan was a tiny, insignificant, and maybe a slightly less inferior Asian nation as far as the Western powers were concerned. Yeah, sure, Japan could beat China, and maybe even take over Korea. Impressive. Okay, but that's just a little playground scuffle. One oriental nation or another, it really makes no difference to you. You, Mother Russia, backed up by Germany and France, asked Japan to kindly bugger off or else. Japan couldn't get out of the Liaodong Peninsula fast enough. Congratulations! You finally won the great game. Strolled through it, in fact. Unfrozen, unfettered access to the ocean at last. Russia has always been good at trains, and so you start rapidly laying tracks across Manchuria to connect this newfound access point with the rest of the motherland. Time to ship the overwhelming might of the Russian Empire to the whole wide world. Uh-uh, not so quite. There's still some, admittedly, rapidly dwindling time for Britain to do something about it and stop Russia from getting too OP. The situation is bad, and Britain desperately needs an ally. The one country in East Asia that's, you know, farthest away from the Stone Age is Japan, although that's still a pretty low bar. Beggars can't be choosers, and on January 30th, 1902, the Anglo-Japanese alliance was signed and Britain starts doing what it does best, meddle in the affairs of other countries. Britain was basically a hot mill flirting with unexperienced, awkward Japan. She's been around the block before, this was more of a casual thing. But not for Japan, oh no. Japan completely freaked out, caught feelings right away, and told the MILF he loved her. This was a historical moment in Japanese history. Allies with the untouchable British Empire? Japan, bursting with hormones and euphoria, does the unthinkable and sneak attacks the Russian fleet at Chemulpol Bay in Port Arthur, starting the Russo-Japanese War. Shit's about to get real. Britain had no idea that the Japanese were this fucking crazy. This attack was suicide! God damn it. No turning back now. The Russians have to be stopped, and this was the only chance Britain was going to get. Yeah, but Japan just jumped Russia out of the blue, and even their alliance says that Britain has to stay neutral in situations like this. There's no way Britain could get involved even if it wanted to. How would the French respond? They've been awfully close with Russia lately. And let's not forget, this was on the other side of the world. This wasn't anything like the Crimean War. Britain nopes out of the situation pretty quick and declares neutrality, officially telling everyone, don't look at me. Japan just went cyber psycho. I had nothing to do with this. That was the official story anyway. Uh, Britain might have accidentally helped out a little here and there, you know, Japan somehow, got more than enough money to wage a war against Russia. I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's a bloody miracle. A Japanese negotiator just happened to meet an American banker in London who just happened to be interested in buying 82 million pounds of Japanese bonds. Shut up. Stop asking questions. It's a miracle. Yeah, no, the British government orchestrated the whole thing. King Edward VII ordered the London banking figurehead, Ernest Castle, to peer pressure his buddy, American banking giant Jacob H. Schiff into buying Japanese bonds. Japan then somehow got a bunch of modern weapons. What? I mean, ships get lost at sea. Happens all the time. Specifically, six battleships and, well, a boatload of armored and fast cruisers got lost and conveniently reappeared as the backbone of the Japanese fleet. Yeah, this story's getting pretty thin. All right, no more bullshit. Britain allows Japan to cut in line and buy the Italian battleship that Argentina ordered a few years ago. But Russia wanted battleships too, and ordered some from neutral Britain. Britain said, no, sorry, the British Navy bought it first, but the British Navy just sold them to Japan for the money that Britain sourced for Japan. Battleships need coal to run, and boom. Premium quality Ireland coal, Amazon primed all the way to Japan. 
This is getting really outrageous, but Russia's stroke is just getting started. With the Russian Far East Fleet heavily crippled by Japan's cheap shot at Port Arthur, Russia sends its Black Sea Fleet to beat some manners into Japan. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Britain narks on Russia, screeching, You can't send military ships through the Mediterranean, per our agreement after the Crimean War. Britain threatens a full-scale war with Russia if one warship even tries to pass through. Fuck! Russia's forces send its Baltic fleet all the way from St. Petersburg. Russia tries to pass through the Suez Canal because no stupid contract was signed about that, right? But guess who owns the Suez Canal? That's right, Britain. And Britain screeches, your boat's too big, step bro, and refuses to squeeze the Russian ships through. Russia now has to sail all the way around the world on a bullshit 37,000 kilometers or 23,000 miles route just to fight this tiny country. It's a long journey. Russia has to make numerous gas station breaks at ports along the way, but Britain pretty much owns them all and orders for all Russian ships to be completely disarmed as soon as they enter. Finally, Britain would spot the Russian fleet whenever they got close to one of the many British colonies and relay that intel to Japan in real time, essentially unlocking map hack mods. Britain technically didn't do any of the fighting against Russia, but they supported Japan with everything else needed for a war. When the exhausted, demoralized Russian fleet finally arrived near Japanese waters, they could barely function, let alone fight a war. On May 27th, 1905, the battle finally commenced. It wasn't much of a battle, to be honest. Japan knew when and where the Russians were going to arrive, so they camped the Eastern Strait, and Spahn killed the Russian fleet as soon as they entered with a huge cannon barrage. 19 of the 37 Russian ships were sunk, the feared Russian Navy was eviscerated, and that's how a much smaller country fought a war against Russia with Western support and won. Russia literally could not fight Japan anymore. That being said, Japan didn't want to invade mainland Russia either, and the two countries awkwardly shuffled to the negotiation table. The Treaty of Portsmouth formally ended the Russo-Japanese War. Russia's feared navy, once the third strongest in the world, plummeted all the way down to sixth place. Yeah, Russia wasted a bunch of lives and money on this war, but its reputation as a world superpower took the hardest hit. Exposed to the world as the nothing burger it was, Russia quietly retreated away from Manchuria, the Korean Peninsula, and China's eastern coast. It wasn't like Japan's valuation suddenly went to the moon because of this either, because Japan really didn't do all that much. Yeah, it was able to get some amount of territory in the Liaodong and the southern Sakhalin, but that was because Russia was withdrawing anyway. There was no way to get Russia to pay reparations for a war that, let's not forget, Japan randomly started with no provocation whatsoever. The true winner of the war was Britain, who managed to cripple its rival, Russia, with minimal investment while letting Japan wear itself out at the same time. Surely the Japanese would have learned the hard way that playing in the big leagues is difficult. Surely they'd be humbled, if not outright terrified of the might of the industrial West. Nope. Remember, Japan was nuttier than anybody could have possibly imagined. Japan's delusions of grandeur started to spiral out of control, thinking that it single-handedly brought the Russian Empire to its knees. Forgetting about all the Western support that made the victory possible, Japan hyped itself up to the point where it thought that doing a Pearl Harbor was a good idea 30 years later and got fucking nuked twice. I'll pass the question off to you. Where do you think this current particular conflict is going? What will historians say about our choices in history? Let me know in the comments down below. This has been David Bradford from Knowledge Raiders, and try not to get nuked out there.